Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Living Environment Podcast. Uh, this is Mr. Gonzalez. Welcome to Episode 7, Mitosis and Meiosis. Now, we touched upon mitosis and meiosis in the last episode or two episodes ago when we talked about the cell really quickly. Uh, but in this episode, we're going to dive with a, a little bit more detail about what happens in mitosis and what happens in meiosis. And we'll also look at some regions questions uh, about these two topics. Now, they're both cell division, but they, uh, and they both involve very similar things like chromosomes and making cells. Uh, but they are um, they actually have two main goals that are different. Okay. Now, before we start to understand mitosis and meiosis, we want to understand what chromosomes are. Okay, so chromosomes are the um, uh, structures that hold your genes, and when a cell wants to divide or make a new cell, it needs to pass these genes on to the next cell. And it does this by passing on the chromosomes. There's a problem, though. If you split the chromosomes in half, then each time you made a new cell, it would only have half the genes. So what has to happen is the chromosomes need to duplicate. Okay. So if you look at this orange awesome cell that I drew, it has two chromosomes in there. Now those hot dogs, each one is a chromosome. Now, you've probably, so there it is, there's a chromosome. You've probably seen a chromosome that looks like this. That's where it gets a little weird. That's also a chromosome. The difference is the single chromosome is before something called DNA replication. This is what the cell looks like after the chromosome doubles itself. So the cell on the left has two chromosomes, and the cell on the right also has two chromosomes. Just understand, understand that the chromosome duplicate, duplicates itself, and that's called DNA replication. It has to happen before the cell divides. Now, what's cool is this occurs in both mitosis and meiosis. The DNA needs to double before any division takes place. Okay, so let's start with mitosis. Mitosis. The first question you should have is, do I need to know the steps? Now, you may have learned these, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, um, but you don't. For the regions, you're not tested on what occurs on the phases. With that said, I have seen some regions questions where the stages of mitosis are labeled with these. Um, and so you don't need to name the phases. You may need to um, you just, just know they exist, but they're usually not tested on the regions. Um, the two main ones, if you want to know any, metaphase is where the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, and anaphase is where the chromosomes split. Those are the two main phases as far as chromosomes are, concern, are concerned. Okay. Chromosomes in mitosis, what do they do? Well, just like we said before, the first thing they do is they do they perform DNA replication. So the, set, the chromosomes double their DNA, and then they form two cells. And what happens is those chromosomes split, and those chromosomes split, and you end up with two identical cells. Okay? So mitosis makes identical cells, the parent uh, for example, if the parent has 46 chromosomes, the offspring will have 46 chromosomes. So what is the result of mitosis? Two identical cells, both with a full set of chromosomes. Okay, And the word, the vocab word for a cell with a full set of chromosomes is a diploid cell. Now in humans, our diploid cells have 46 chromosomes. That's our full set. But if you're like a fruit fly, you might have eight. Purpose of mitosis. There's a bunch of awesome purposes for mitosis, but here are the popular ones. Number one, it's a form of asexual reproduction. So organisms can actually perform mitosis to make offspring. The number one example of that is bacteria. Bacteria are awesome uh, mitosis reproducers. Um, other examples of asexual reproduction are budding, 
which is where uh, a hydra, which is sort of like a jellyfish, grows a little bud out of its body, and that's a clone of the parent. That's asexual reproduction. And another good example is uh, two more. One is like starfish. If you chop a starfish in half, you can actually get two organisms. And uh, vegetative propagation, which is like strawberries. If you plant one strawberry plant, it it underground. What was that? Oh, it 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 grows underground uh, asexually and makes clones of the plant. Mitosis uh, repairs tissue damage. So if you cut your skin, you can grow more skin with mitosis uh, and growth. Zygote to blastocyst. What this means is uh, a zygote is the cell, like when sperm and egg first meet, they make a zygote. And in order for the zygote to grow into a uh, embryo and a fetus, it needs to do mitosis. And so um, it performs mitosis and becomes a ball of cells called the blastocyst. Cancer. Cancer is related to mitosis because it's mitosis gone wild. It basically is um, the cells just keep dividing, 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 dividing. Um, and you end up with th a tumor, which is a uh, buildup in the tissue, uh, like a lump or something. Um, so that is cancer. All right, so let's look at some regions questions. So here's one that says, a certain bacterial colony originated from the division of a single bacterial cell. Each cell in this con colony will most likely, one, express adaptations unlike those of other cells. Two, replicate different numbers of genes. Three, have a resistance to different antibiotics. Four, synthesize the same proteins and enzymes. Okay. The answer turns out to be four. The cells, the bacteria in that colony will synthesize the same proteins and enzymes. Now, if you didn't really get this question, or maybe you get a question similar to this on the regions, I want to show you something. Check it out. Even if you don't know anything, you can pretty much figure out some of the answers on the regions. Look at the circled blue. Number one has unlike, different, different, and number four, the correct answer has same. It's the only one with same. So if you ever get a problem uh, or multiple choice that you don't know, try to look for hints like this. Which row in the chart below best describes asexual reproduction? Uh, the first column uh, gives you number of parents, and the second one says comparison of offspring to parents. So in asexual reproduction, you have one parent, and you have identical offspring. So the answer is one. Okay, in this region's question, you got a diagram that is uh, shown there, and it says, which series of terms best represents the sequence of processes shown? And meiosis, growth, differentiation, mitosis, meiosis, differentiation, meiosis, differentiation, growth, mitosis, differentiation, growth. Differentiation is where stem cells, which are cells that are blank, meaning they can become any cells in the human body, um, differentiation is, is the specialization of our, our, of our cells. It's when cells become like brain cells and muscle cells and skin cells. So the answer here would be, the first thing that happens is mitosis. That's the zygote dividing into the ball. And then here the ball has to differentiate, um, which means it needs to become special cells. And then it'll grow. Um, now, the circle on the right shows something called gastrulation, which is usually not tested on the regions, but I'll mention it here. It's where um, the ball of cells actually turns in on itself to form layers in the body uh, to become an organism. Uh, so that's gastrulation. Um, so that's usually on the diagram. Another region's question. As a human red blood cell matures, it loses its nucleus. As a result of this loss, a mature red blood cell lacks the ability to... Hmm, with no nucleus, I wonder what that means. Well, it means it has no, no um, chromosomes, so it has to be answer... Bing! Four. Carry out cell division. Okay, so that was mitosis. 
Um, let's look at meiosis. All right. Meiosis is a little more complicated, but basically meiosis, meiosis's role in sexual reproduction is pretty simple. It makes the sex cells or the gametes. Now, in order to make sex cells, you need to half the chromosome number. Okay, so let me show you what that is. In meiosis, or when you talk about meiosis, you don't just talk about individual chromosomes. You actually talk about pairs of chromosomes because you have a chromosome set of 46 chromosomes, okay? But you really have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. What that means is you got half your chromosomes from mom, 23, and you got the other half from dad, 23, to make your full set, okay? So you actually have two of, it's kind of like socks. It's like if you had 23 pairs of socks. So the same thing with chromosomes, okay? So when you're talking about meiosis, since meiosis is going to make eggs or going to make sperm, what meiosis does is it takes that 46, the 46 chromosomes you have, the 23 pairs, and divides them up into sperm or egg, okay? Now, here's how it works. This is called the karyotype. This is what your full set of chromosomes looks like, except these are like gummy worms. But just so you know, you have, again, 46 of these total chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes, and of the 23 pairs, one pair is your sex chromosomes. That means the other 22 pairs are the same in both male and female, and that final pair is called your sex chromosomes. If you have two long gummy worms, you're female. That's XX. In this picture, this is a male because there's one long gummy worm, that's a chromosome, and one small gummy worm. So this is an XY. So this karyotype shows a male. A karyotype is used um, by doctors to you know, see if there's any chromosomal, extra chromosomes or chromosomal mistakes, like Down syndrome. All right, so let's look at meiosis. Here's what happens. In meiosis, the homologous pairs first replicate. They do their DNA uh, replication. And so these are the homologous pairs. Notice there's the mom chromosome on the left, the yellow one, and a dad chromosome. On the right, you have a small mom chromosome and a small dad chromosome. Now, this cell that I drew only has um, two pairs or four chromosomes. If we were to draw our real cell, we'd have to draw 23 pairs, remember, or 46 of these. But we don't have that much room. So here's what happens. The chromosomes hang out together in pairs. And eventually what ends up happening is they make two cells where the pairs say goodbye to each other. Goodbye. So in this one, you have mom's big chromosome in one cell and dad's big chromosome in the other one and dad's little one in that cell, and mom's little one in the cell on the right. Now just know I could have put mom in the left, all mom in the left, and all dad in the right, but I divided them up this way just to show you that anything goes with meiosis as far as the pair splitting up, okay? The only thing you don't get is two lar the two yellow ones in one and two blue ones in the other the homologous pairs split up in the first stage of meiosis. Now in the second half of meiosis, the main thing that happens is just like mitosis, those chromosomes split up and you end up with this, which is you just end up with four haploid cells. In meiosis, you get four daughter cells with half the chromosome number. Those are considered haploid cell. And the way you remember that is haploid is half the chromosome number. These are also known as the gametes or your sex cells like sperm or egg. So here's what's super cool about meiosis. The reason that sexual reproduction is so powerful as far as evolution goes is that it makes different offspring. You don't have clone babies. So watch. Look at these spots on the chromosomes. This is one way that meiosis um, makes uh, like variable offspring. The homologous pairs, that means the mom pair and the dad pair that are next to each other, can actually switch genetic material. 
And that's called crossing over. Crossing over is where the chromosomes actually kind of hug and give um, like a little bit of their own DNA to each other. And that sort of looks like this. This is where now instead of having mom, mom, dad, dad, mom, mom, dad, dad, the, the DNA sort of split, and so genes got transferred. So it's like mom, mod, damn dad. You get it. But the whole point is you get combinations. So genes that are typically linked, like, for example, people usually inherit, like, red hair and freckles together. Well, you can kind of have combinations that are strange. Not strange, but... Uh, just a little bit more rare, like very dark hair and light eyes is usually not inherited together. But with crossing over, you get combinations. And in nature, being an animal with a combination that's different may be good if the environment changes because you're the weirdo that lives. <laughs> so where does meiosis occur? Well, if we're making sex cells like sperm and egg, it has to happen in reproductive organs. So in males, it happens in the testes. That's where sperm is made. And in females, the ovaries. Um, now, males don't start making um, sperm until puberty, but females actually make their eggs way before they're born. All right, so let's look at some meiosis regions questions. The great variety of possible gene combinations in a sexually reproducing species is due in part to the, hmm, number one, sorting of genes as a result of gene replication. Hmm. Number two, pairing of genes as a, re a result of mitosis. That's totally wrong. Number three, pairing of genes as a result of differentiation. Or four, sorting of genes as a result of meiosis. The answer, of course, is four. Genes are sorted, um, which is what meiosis is all about. How about this one? Which cell is normally produced as a direct result of meiosis? Now, without even looking at the choices, you want to, you know it's either sperm or egg. So if I look at the choices, it's got to be two or four. The other two are nonsense. So number two says an egg having the full species number of chromosomes. And number four says sperm having half the normal species uh, number of chromosomes. So the answer is four. Meiosis makes half the chromosome number. Another question that's asked the same thing. The only reason I put this one up is so you can see different words used for mitosis and meiosis. Mitotic and meiotic. So this question says, compared to, compared to human cells resulting from mitotic cell division, human cells resulting from meiotic cell division would have, well, you know that, It'd be one half the chromosome number, answer three. And that's it for mitosis and meiosis. Uh, hope that helped. Good luck, guys.